It was an important day of racing yesterday. I think the two-year-old features have been shaken up with a few of those results. Yeah. A little bit. Uh, who was the most impressive, you think? Oh, uh, what's her name? That filly in uh, Lady at Camelot. You reckon? E- easily. Yeah. Easily. She hit a flat spot and then bounced back, didn't she? Yeah, it was a good win. Yeah. The Waterhouse and Bot Stable. Mate, we'll talk about those later. And I think this is the best two-year-old stable of all time in 2024. Ever. Yeah, right. And I'll, I'll go into their threats okay. a bit later on. Do you, have, do you have some history as well? I or, have, is it, or is this just a, it feels like it is, if, because, which is fine too. It feels like it, but I've also kind of, I've looked, like, I've looked at who, since we've been following, mm. who, was the, who had the most dominant year. May as well get into it now, right? Okay. okay. So I reckon in the year, what year was it? I wrote it down. Let's have a look here. Godolphin 2019. Yep. They had Kiyomichi winning the slipper. They had microphone runner up. And then they had Lyre run third. But then she also won, won the Blue, Blue Diamond. Diamond. So they had a phenomenal. So close. <laughs> so close. She had, they had an outstanding two year old um, season, especially in the Blue Diamond and the Golden Slipper, right? Yep. Yep. But, mate, how's this for a stable for a Waterhouse bot for two year olds? Heading towards these features. This is the best ever. Yeah. I could see them running the trifecta if they took the right horses in both features. Storm Boy, he's number one seed, obviously. Numero uno. Shangri-La Express. Prost, who was an impressive winner yesterday. Yep. Lady of Camelot, who was even better. Espionage, who won on debut. Straight Charge, who's very good. A node, fully lit, and two darn Lizzie. Yeah, wow. This is the best ever. Yeah. Best ever. Easily. I wonder how many runners they'll end up having in the slipper. Mate, that's that's up to the forty one dollar pops in the in the golden slipper market. So I'm sure they have more. They could have they could have like nearly half the field. Yeah, wow. Um and it's not like you're you're sort of struggling to uh, rank them as well because no. like Storm Boy's clearly the best. Yeah. <sighs> but Mate, this uh, lady at Camelot was only 0.02 outside the track record yesterday. Wow. For the 1,100 metres at Rose Hill. Yeah, she she was really impressive. Um, she looked sitting dark. Yep. Uh, and then just got ran, um, just just found a way to, to kick on again. Uh, was Timmy Clark on her? Yep. So he's got he's got some decisions to make. But yeah, so Adam, Adam Hippopotamus is on Storm Boy, so he's like, yeah, I ain't changing. Yeah. But uh, who rode Shangri-La Express? I'll have a look. look. I'll have a look. Because that's, that's still second seed for me. Well, this is the thing. Early season, they can drop off pretty quick. Mm. But I'd be fascinated to kind of like Alabama Express. I've seen a few of his progeny do okay. Mm. Let's have a look here. You long. Regan Bayless. So they're just kind of like spreading everything around. They knew. Yeah. They knew. Um, I could see them running trifecta in the Golden Slipper easily. Yeah, easily. Well, I was going to back Celerity in that race that Lady of Camelot won. I think it was the Widden Stakes, the yep. Widden something or other. So I believe, well, I'll have a look. My gut was feeling saying that it was uh, the race that Red Resistance won last year. Uh, I think Best of Bordeaux won yes. the Colts one. Well, that was that would have been two or three years ago, though. Oh, yeah, true. Yeah. Uh, well, is the Widden Stakes strictly for Phillies? Potentially. You could be right there. Let me let me do some Googling, but you you start talking. You know what? It might have actually been another Waterhouse bot, Philly, that won it last year. Um, and its name is escaping me right now. But it, it either had... Like it would have started like a ten dollar shot in the slipper, maybe. Yeah, right. right. Last year, um, but yeah, I was going to back Celerity in that race uh, out of the Godolphin Stable. Learning to fly, learning to fly. There you go. Um, she got scratched at the gates. J Mac saw that. Obviously, had to sit out the race too. I don't know what he's done to himself. Sore foot. Sore foot. Yep. Just over it. Well. 
Hey, he's got bigger fish to fry. It's only we're only just kicking this thing off. It's still summer. But it's fascinating because J Mac, um, J Mac rarely rides for Waterhouse Bot. Yeah. And he rode celerity in the trials and was like, yeah, I'm going to stick with this thing. Yep. So clearly he has a high opinion of it, but even if it did race, yeah, would it have beat Lady of Camelot? Not based on that time that you no. just gave to me. No, it made, she absolutely pounded the clock into the into the earth. So she would have bet one that race first Prost by 4.3 lengths. Um, so about a length faster to the 600 metres than Prost the Prost race. They were the only two 1100 meter races on the day and then went home three lengths quicker. So yeah, only 0.02 seconds outside the track record. For a two-year-old, that's ultra, ultra impressive. That is very impressive. I think it was a fast day at Rose Hill though. It was a good three. Well, the, uh, uh, our Cobison broke the record. Yep. Or, or was nearly broke the record for a 1200 meter race, I think. Yep. At Rose Hill, which is, you know, some fast races have been run there. Yeah. That's for sure. So, so my question mark would be Golden Slipper, of the last 10 editions, I'd say, what, eight or nine of them have been on a softer, heavy track. So what are these horses like on rain-affected ground? That's probably where you're going, okay, there might be some something from left field that's coming in now. Potentially, yeah. Um, but no, it was, it was a fantastic day of two-year-old racing. Uh, I thought Pross was, was good. Um, well found by yours truly. Um, well, yours truly being Dan Hutcher, not, <laughs> not me. Um, and he drifted as well. It's like 350 maybe. Yeah, 350. And it was the, unbelievably, like it was the be- Sydney Sources best of the day as well. Um, mm. But 350, um, professional. Like professional. Can you, can you see him winning a slipper? He's, he's fourth in line for me. Fourth or fifth in line for the slipper, which which makes me want them to take him down to the Blue Diamond. It's a bit of a double-edged sword, though, because you were speaking about him in futures for the Diamond being 26 bucks, and he wouldn't, he wouldn't be that now. I don't know what he is now. He's coming to 17s. So that's still backable. That is still backable. Um, but because he won on the weekend, it's like, is he actually going to go there now? So he's yeah. a bit of a double-edged sword. Um, but the thing that won in Melbourne, Coleman... He's smart. He's a smart Cole. Yep. So uh, I gave a push for counter-offensive... Who went really quick up front? Um, if he was rated a little bit better, he might have been in the finish closer. But I don't think anything was beating Coleman. Nah, and shout out to Marcus Williams who's sitting on a fifty-one dollar ticket on Co- Coleman in the Blue Diamond. So Wowee. outstanding shopping by you, sir. But Coleman, now it was the only thousand meter race of the day, so you'd mm. expect them to run this time, right? But they still have to go out there and do it. Fastest last two hundred meters of the Caulfield meeting. Uh, and Anisa, fastest last four hundred meter split. She was meeting. she was great too, yep. Anisa. Um, so I think you know as it stands right now, depending on what comes down from Sydney, they're the top two seeds for the diamond. Well, all right. So here's the blue diamond market: Coleman four bucks, High Octane at four sixty. I'm High Octane. I'm taking Coleman over High Octane so at this stage. Yeah. Anisa seven dollar third favorite, and then Bodyguard. We've only seen him the once or twice at trials and in races. He just looks like a a galloping kind of like real leggy type. Yeah, he's um he's got an interesting action bodyguard. I'm guessing he's probably going to resume uh, next week. You'd yeah, say. I'd is, say that, is that the Bre- Blue Diamond Prelude? Yeah, I'd say so. Yeah. And um, so he's at eight dollars. Bold Bastille eight bucks. Lady at Camelot's coming to eight. She was fifty one dollars if you were listening. During the week, but I doubt she'd be heading towards a blue diamond. Yeah. Um. So bodyguard's probably the one that if he wins, goes out and wins impressively, he'll be at the five dollars about that. So, but Caulfield's the worry for me with that horse. I think he we saw him down the straight at Flemington and he was outstanding. Yeah, he's 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 got the sort of action where you could see him really crabbing around that yep. bend. Um. But for, for me, after watching yesterday, Coleman's got to be the number one seed. Yeah. I think he's got a bit more um, brilliance compared to high octane. Yep. But with these two-year-olds, as we know, they can they can improve and yeah. um, and go backwards pretty rapidly. So. Yep. Switzerland. He's probably the one who's only a week ago well, singing his praises, but he's probably the forgotten horse at this stage, I would have thought, in the golden slipper market. 
Yeah, I think so. Um, like his second favourite seven dollars, but it's mm. fascinating with Coolmore as well. So Kieran's basically locked in, and it's fair to say Kieran's not been in the greatest form last two to three years. He's, he's been right. going pretty well last month or so. He's racing very well in twenty twenty four. Credit where credit's due. Mm. Wrote another winner yesterday, I believe. Yeah, he did. Um, but it's uh. It's fascinating because, like, Coolmore will probably send their best horses to Chris Waller and then J-Mac doesn't ride necessarily for Coolmore all the time. You know what I mean? Mm. Yeah. And it's like they even got Ryan Moore out last year to ride for Coolmore. Yeah, well, I think that might be part of the reason why um, J-Mac hasn't jumped on the number one Coolmore seed for the slipper because, you know, he probably knows that they'll... Um, They'll get Ryan Moore out. Well, they have, they do have. Well, he rode home affairs. You know? He he did, uh, but that 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 was, um, that was as a three year old. I don't think I don't think J Mac rode home affairs in the slipper. Yeah, uh, as a two year old, because home affairs was a, he won the silver slipper, but didn't he didn't win the gold slipper? Obviously, yeah. So maybe maybe it's just that you know that two year old season um, is a little bit different, but. J Max also got Godolphin knocking on his door, right? So he was on cylinder last year. Road Animo, obviously, in secret. So And there's the I think a lot of those big stables, I know Coolmore do it in particular, is if you're right if you ride these Colts in their first group one win, then you get you get a stake or a percentage of their what they go when they go to stud for the first year. Yeah. So he got that for Home Affairs, who was, what was he at the start of? 150 grand or something? No, he was like 110 or something. Right. Um, he's he's down to 100 now. But yeah, um, yeah he's the same price as uh, So You Think. So You Think's gone up to like 99 grand. Um, <laughs> whereas he was only he was only like 20 or 30 a few years ago. That's wild. So You Think. That's crazy. That is crazy. All right. So, yeah, these two-year-olds, mate, I think Coleman is the number one seed for the Blue Diamond. Um, Emisa, she was very good. There was one that I thought was a sneaky run in, beto- in behind um, Prost, I think it was, the traf- Traffic Warden. That the was a dolphin thing. That was a, good win- uh, that was a good running into third. 26 bucks in the precise produce and the champagne steaks out of Street Boss, Animo Sire. So... Um, runs on the board from a from a breeding perspective. There, you know, yeah. mate. <laughs> the big guy Mo. Um, oh, I was reminiscing actually on him during the week. Just, uh, just what, when you had a spare moment. Yeah, I was just reading his stallion profile on the Dallas Stallions <laughs> website. I was like, what a special, special horse he was. <laughs> like. Like to win that to win that size produce stakes like he's a two year old after placing in the diamond and the slipper, braining him there and then winning a cox plate like a couple of years ago. Oh, it's just what a special horse. Yep. Very good. Mm. Uh what we did you have any other takeaways from the weekend racing? The other the other races for me were a bit eh. Uh there was a couple of smart wins. Um our Kobison was a pretty smart win, so that's yeah. a that's an up and coming horse. Um, I saw that uh, the Melbourne Racing Club or Victorian Racing Racing Victoria, who whoever's in charge of the bloody um, all beige mile, um, <laughs> gave Jimmy Starr a a wild card after his his win yesterday. Yeah, right. And it's like, okay, yeah, like there's a lot of hype with this horse, and he put that field to the sword. It was a benchmark 84, I'm pretty yeah, sure. Yeah, it was. So, like, yeah, you want to hope he's putting that field to the sword if you're giving him an all-star mile wild card. He's he's 15s in the Doncaster market. For a horse like that, like, trained by the Kieran Ma stable, I... An all-star mile will almost be a bit annoying, a bit like, well, yeah, now we've got to run him in it. Whereas in the past, that's a horse that you're like, no, we're going to beat the handicap and win a Doncaster Mile with yeah. 52 kilos on our back. Yep. Well, I'd be interested because All-Star Mile is just like a 
it's a pop up race. Yeah. So, so would there be any penalties? I, I think the handicap is sometimes taken into account, and sometimes they, sometimes they, um, they don't like. But but it's frustrating to me though because it's like, okay, now now he's got two grand finals, or or do or if he goes into that race yeah, and you know the Doncaster Miles the grand final, you're like, well, he's not a betting pro- proposition then in that race, and yeah. it just, I don't know. Um, so he he's he looks to be a horse with a lot of ability. Don't get me wrong, but like you you think of in recent history, right? Two really good geldings who who became or become really good. Group one weight for age performers. I'm Thunderstruck. Mm-hmm. It's the bright side. Yep. I'm Thunderstruck. Remember, he only got into that futurity through scratchings. He got absolutely slammed in the market, really low rating horse, and came home like a freight train. You know, like, okay, yeah, clearly he's a horse with a lot of talent, but his rating was still kept really low. And obviously, wins a two rack with a lot of weight on his back, wins a Golden Eagle, and then transitions into being a genuine weight for age horse. Mr. Brightside, they they worked him through the grades really, really nicely. Wins a Doncaster at a, at a big price with no weight on his back. Transitions into being a really good weight for each horse. Like, let Jimmy Starr do that. Yep. You know, why, why is the Melbourne Racing Club watching him put him to the sword, yeah, in a fucking benchmark 84 race and being like, we need to get him in the All-Star Miles. Like, come on, man. <laughs> like, let the, let the horse just go through his grades. Yeah. Um. So he's won five on the trot now, five from six. Yeah, he's 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 clearly a horse with some talent. Yeah. Clearly, he's won on the good. He's won on the soft. Well, he's pretty adaptable. He well, came from the back yesterday, missed the start, and still put him to the sword. Don't get me wrong. I think I think he's a good horse. He's a good up and coming horse. Yeah. But like, you know, let me let him just let him just work his way into it, yeah. please. Yeah, and if he's to be a like at. A hand at this stage, like a Group One, Group Two handicap type style of horse, he needs to be beating these fields by at least two and a half lengths. Easily, like easily, easily. Well, and that's the thing. Who did he beat? Yeah. Um. So yeah, that's that's my opinion on yesterday's racing. Yep. Um. Was there any other sort of smartish winners that off the top of my noggin? Lady Laguna ticked that box for me. The Group Three against the boys. Um. She, you know, she was set up to win that race. Uh, it was run pretty pretty slowly up front, and then she absolutely brained him late by nearly two lengths. You know, yeah, she was she was good, um, but that's her for me. She's a Group Three horse, yep. which and there's nothing wrong with that. No. <laughs> nothing wrong I, with that at all. I don't know, like twelve hundred meters. Oh, could she step out to something like a? Like I think there's two options for her. One is like the thirteen hundred meters of the Galaxy handicap. Like down in the weights still. Like she, if she had like 50, not 50, but like 53, 50. Yeah. Or something like that. 52 kilos. That could potentially interest me. Or do you go against the girls at the 1500 in like the Cornwall series? Mm, no, nah, I think she's a, you know what? You know, it's a perfect race for her. Uh, I feel he's a mare's sprint race in bloody Adelaide. That's a good shout. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's the right race for her. Yep. Because she's she's really consistent, but for me, I don't think there's there's much more there's not much more upside in a tank. Well, Lady Laguna. I don't know. Like she she surprised me. I thought she was done after a two year old season where she she had a couple of good runs and then she came back. She was a bit flat. And she's just furnished over this summer summer like autumn period into a really consistent. consistent yeah, oh yeah, she's she's caliber. really con- she's really consistent. Yeah. yeah. Um. There was one other win yesterday in uh, race five at Caulfield as a benchmark 70. So don't get too carried away and give him a bloody all-star mile wild card. Punchy. Punch lane. Um, he's a four-year-old gelding. Why well, so you think? In our lifetime, Hutch, we are owning <laughs> a so you think gelding. Like oh. We're waiting until the Colts gelded and then we're buying it. Yeah. <laughs> so it can race for 10 years. <laughs> um, so he's, his record now is seven starts, four wins and two-thirds. He made it look super, super easy, punch yep. lane. So he's one who I think can can work his way through the grades and, and end up being probably a, that handicapped sort of group two horse. So he's one to keep an eye on. I don't know if he's in any, any markets. I, and I, I, I think it might be a little bit too soon for him to feature. But, yeah. you know, once he gets to five, another, another year racing under his belt, he'll improve. And this is the thing is like you look at Caulfield yesterday, um, what, eight at the – 
eight of the ten winners were in the first four heading into the straight or heading at the four hundred. So I uh, get with the rail out nine meters of Caulfield, that's exactly where you want to be. Yeah. But he has the he has the pattern. Benchmark 70, 60 kilos on his back. Like that's a pretty pretty big weight. And he's still beat in by three lengths. Yeah. At a benchmark seventy, sure, but if he is to get make it to that group three, group two level, like that's what he needs to do. Hundred percent. So they're they're the green lights for me, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And in Sydney, like I was more interested in the ones down in the weights, like mm. at set weights penalties and handicaps and you know, who I needed to kind of see it and they did get the job done. So we mentioned Prost, he had fifty four and a half, giving three kilos to traffic warden. Uh, Lady Laguna was probably one of the most impressive wins of the day, fifty six kilos with the mayor's allowance, you know. 58 basically for her so that was really impressive lady at camelot as mentioned tough race prior but she she i think she proved the doubt is wrong there and then the only other one who was pretty who the source also jumped on was infatuation for bjorn baker mm. but again down to 54 54 kilos like outside of that it's like pretty pretty meh you know like kettle hill winning at 60 kilos who's a can't win in Melbourne, but he goes to Sydney. Yeah, he grows a leg. Um, I thought the Black Cloud was a good thing in that last. I missed the start. Mate, and it just had the afterburners just wanted to lead. Yeah. And then it just got run down. It only lost by 0.2 of length. Mm-hmm. Like, Joe, uh, I reckon that might have been very close to the race that um, I think about it won this time last year. Potentially. Like he won a benchmark or a group three or something. I reckon he won a benchmark and then he won a group three race. And we're like, oh, this thing will be no good. And then bang. Yeah, same silks. Um, yeah, I think she's by Seamus Award, Black Cloud. So interesting that was a sprint race. See what happens with her. Um, yeah. Stradbroke. Stradbroke. <laughs> The Sydney benchmark 72 is setting off for Stratbrook season. Um, so you mentioned J-Mac was injured, but one thing that you talked to me about earlier mm. in the week was injuries to horses, i.e. alligator blood. Yes. And I guess like the considerations around that, and this is not my area of my area of expertise. Nor, nor is it mine. Like, I don't know. Um, but I, so I, you know, when, when Alligator Blood was, you know, ruled out for the autumn, the, potentially the year and potentially the rest of his career, just got me thinking about, you know, some injuries recently to some of our better horses that have just been absolutely devastating and really sort of affected, um, you know, I guess the depth of our racing at the, at the top level. So, so, yeah, clearly, you know, Alligator Blood is one and you look at... Um, other horses like Giga Kick at the moment, he's injured. Um, most notably, the last few years, you got Incentivize, uh, Hitotsu. Um, so there's just, there's been consistent injuries every spring, every autumn to at least one really, really good horse uh, without a fight's injured at the moment. Half tendon. Yeah. Oh, and, what does that mean? Yeah. And, and it's. And Peter Moody made some comments, uh, whether last year or the year before, about Black Caviar, because they've changed a lot yes. of the, um, the protocols, the protocols around recovery for horses involving like steroids and stuff. And you say you say steroids, and you're like, what, trying to trying to turn these horses into bodybuilders. It's like no, <laughs> it's to assist in recovery from yes. injuries, uh, because every every horse is probably carrying some niggles. They're they're athletes, right? Um, and you know the steroids when they're not not during a prep, but in you know in a spelling period, yep. just helps them to recover faster and 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 you know uh, be better suited for the upcoming prep. And yeah, Peter Moody made some comments about Black Caviar. He said, "Look, with today's protocol, she she wouldn't have raced. She would have been a three start undefeated yeah. horse, but she would get uh, scratched by especially racing Victoria stewards." Yes. Uh, and, and he made the point. He's like, "Look, the, the steroids aren't impacting their performance whatsoever." Uh, when they're in, in the middle of a prep because it's it's out of the system. It's not doing anything. But it's helping the horse recover from just the general wear and tear of racing. Like, 
you know, so that they can, so these elite athletes can can come back and keep coming back, and it just increases their longevity. It, it helps them, you know, get through their races and bounce out of it a lot better. And the protocols that were put in place to, you know, get rid of that stuff out of the racing, like yeah, they probably had the best of intentions. Let's clean it up. Let's make it a lot cleaner, and then, and let's get it rid of the grey areas. But I think it might have actually caused more damage to the industry than good. Yeah. Because like a horse like Incentivize, you know, yeah, he, he did some damage in that Melbourne Cup to himself, but what if he, you know, spells straight away and just rehab program with all the all the medical capabilities that we have nowadays? Yeah, sure, he probably still would have missed the autumn, but he comes back as in the spring as an absolutely fine horse. And yeah. and that's a that's a genuine wait for age staying star, which we just haven't produced in this country for a very long time. Uh, Hitotsu, like if he raced on as a four year old, imagine imagine him versus Animo, yeah, in the Cox Plate. Because to be honest, if there was one other wait for age horse with the brilliance to beat Animo during that Hitotsu. spring prep, Hitotsu was the one. Yeah, you don't see Derby winners like that. No, not at all. Uh, and come back and and win the Guineas and then bounce into another derby and win that. He would have been a perfect 2,000 metre horse. Perfect. And then Giga Kick, you know, the most exciting young up-and-coming sprinter, Gelding, ruled out of his entire four-year-old season pretty much uh, because of his sort of minor, like a, a minor muscle, just not recovering. Like, get some steroids into that. Yeah, and I think what's been... I think there's been a bit of a development in the last five years, right? And we have to caveat that we obviously don't necessarily know 100% of what we're talking about here either. But all we can t- talk about is like our external view of the industry, industry as we see it. I look at a horse like Right You Are. So he did a tendon. He was out of the game for, what, a year, maybe two, 18 months to two years. And he comes back and he's racing in bloody group ones yeah. as a horse, right? And I look at... I've just Googled it because tendons are the ones that you go like, I hear a tendon and I'm like, ah, damn yeah. it. Like that's, that's that horse's career pretty much done because yep. they they like they don't necessarily come back. Right you are is pretty much the exception to the rule. So I Google what causes tendon injuries in horses. Injuries to these tendons occurs most commonly during exercise. Sure. Strenuous exercise can result in tearing of fibers, especially in unfit horses or in horses which are overstretching overstre- uh, tendons in fast work or on unlevel ground or during a jumping at speed. Correct conditioning is a necessity. Now, I look at, without a fight, who's done, I think the terminology that the Freemans used was like half tendon. There's no way that that horse wasn't conditioned. Like, you know what I mean? Yep. Like, they said, he, they put him in the paddock and he tried to run through a fence. He was like, that. <laughs> he's like, that is like, get me in work, bro. Yeah. So, it's like, I think you're right in saying that you look at these, all these different trainers, right? My, my career, my now, takes him down the beach, gets the cold therapy going, all that sort of stuff as well. But, like, potentially there is some medication that could assist with these guys because I think they do give them some anti-inflammatories, but what else is there that could assist in this recovery? 100%. Like, uh, we've got so much at our disposal now, that you know, technology, medical technology, whatever, that really at the, at the end of the day, if it comes to the Saturday, the fir- very first Saturday of their prep when they're resuming and it actually has no impact whatsoever on how fast they're going to run on the day, What's the harm? What's the harm? If if anything, could it prevent that little niggly injury potentially turning into something catastrophic on the day, and it's actually better for the horse's safety? Yeah. So I don't know. Just something, just something to think about because, yeah. you know, it, it it it's actually really, you know, when you when you read about those injuries, like without a fight, giga kick, um, alligator blood, like. The, the best horses are the ones that, are, that attract people to the track and that attract people's eyeballs to the screen. And it's happening way too consistently to our top liners. Yep. Way too consistently. I agree. So, yeah, just, just something to think about and something to keep an eye on. 
if we've missed something here and there there is like some additional protocols and you know about this sort of stuff, hit us up in the DMs because we'd 100%. be fascinated to know. Um, 100%, yeah. I wonder how different it is from state to state as well. Yeah. Different jurisdictions have different rules or if Racing Australia, if they exist, <laughs> uh, if they've um, had like an overarching umbrella. But yeah, let us let us know for sure because yeah, we, we don't. We don't know the ins and the outs. Like I've done a bit of reading on it, but yeah, you know, I'm well, not going to read the fine print. The biggest thing for me about like the interstate thing is how can you have? We nearly we could have had a, you know, um, we could have missed one of the best Caulfield Cup Melbourne Cup doubles because that without a fight was nearly scratched from the Caulfield Cup. Yeah, because of his action, and it's like. How he's cleared to run in Sydney, easy. How can he? And he he ran in he ran in Queensland. How can it be different in Victoria? How? Oh, because the Victorians are they're more afraid of um, sure. the agenda. I but, get that. Yeah. But so that's in the back of their mind. If that's influencing everything you do, well, the and that's where the training facility Werribee comes into it and that sort of thing. But then they're wanting to get rid of Sandown, which would be a pretty good alternative in my view. It's like Mm. long straights, you know, condition the horses correctly. Like whenever the Melbourne Cup comes around, they always say, oh, where have you done about that? For these international horses, they need it. something a little bit different. Yeah. So why aren't we listening to those people? It's like, I know money doesn't grow on trees, but. Yeah. It's a good good point you make. Um, Well, you know, someone like a a Sulcum was at... uh, when he was down in Victoria, it was at Macedon Lodge, I'm pretty sure. And Chris Waller's sort of openly spoken about like how it's been the best thing for him uh, during that prep because of the facilities available to help with his conditioning, right? So, and clearly he's allowed to go there because he's not an international horse anymore. Whereas these other international horses, like, yeah. He, I don't know, Racing Victoria is just a weird one for me because they, they really, they're desperate to get these internationals into the cups to make to to make them more exciting and to make like, them a world world class race exactly and, and and yet they do like it seems like almost everything in their power to make that less palatable for for the international trainers so yeah. i don't know i think i think they've got too many voices in their head for racing victoria for me whereas pvl is just like i'm just gonna make these races worth a shitload of money. Yeah. And if the internationals want to come, great. If they don't, I don't care anyway. Well, mate, there's a reason why the Japanese horses are now going targeting the Queen Elizabeth instead of the Cox Plate. And that's a real shame. Yeah. Because Lee Grishua's Cox Plate win, that's one of the best I've ever seen. Probably yeah. the best I've ever seen. Yeah. Um, and now the Japanese are like, mate, why would we why why would we go through these protocols where we'll just we'll just target the autumn anyway? Yeah, exactly. Worth more money. Um, and it's like that. And Racing Victoria offering for specific lead up races in Japan a million dollar bonus. And they'll fly them out here. And it's still not good enough. No. Racing, that's what I mean. They've got too many voices in their head, Racing Victoria. Um, like their bloody CEO at the moment is more concerned about getting, you know, bloody walkie talkies in front of trainers and jockeys mid race. Like, how, like, honestly. Like, yeah, I'm all for innovation. And he was talking about the big bash and comparing that to horse racing. I'm like, come on, mate. You, you are not on the same page as a lot of people in the industry if you're talking about that bull yarn. Yeah. It's top spin, isn't it? Yeah. It's bull yarn. Yeah. Um, so, but, you know, racing Queensland, meanwhile, <laughs> <laughs> show broke season, lit. Magic millions, lit. <laughs> Speaking of racing Queensland, the Brisbane Bully had a day out yesterday. Five winners, half the card that is, including Jetty at six bucks, Caruto at seven, and his best bet of the day, Captain Fenkel at two ninety, saluting. That's a phenomenal day. With a couple other cherries on top. It's a phenomenal day. Sydney Sauce had a good day. Four shorties, but still have to find them. Still have to find them. Prost at three fifty, best of the day. Uh, Lady Laguna brained them. Lady of Camelot at dollar fifty, so don't really count that. But infatuation at two fifty. So I reckon that's about past mark at those odds. The victim had a room for improvement. Oh, 100%. 100%. Two, two winners, but across those three, like that's 11, 11 winners across three cards. Yeah. Like yeah. that's a that's a 
think that's pretty good. You know, you sh- you're taking that every day of the week. Um, no, a disappointing day for the victim. So um, give us know. a follow on Instagram. You'll see these tips given out. And I think the Perth Prince might be waking from his slumber shortly. And mm-hmm. the Mafia had to sleep in and got... Th- the tips through to us a bit too late, so they couldn't go up. <laughs> Matthew was up late organising some hits <laughs> on a Friday night. Couldn't uh, couldn't wake up in time. So give us a follow on Instagram. They'll be up on our Instagram stories each Saturday morning. Um, but yeah, Group One Racing is back next week. Yes, it is, um, Mister Brightside. What doll eighty? I reckon he'll start doll sixty. Yeah, if he if he draws well. If he draws poorly, maybe a dollar ninety, mate. It'll be three wide, no cover, and still be too good. Sure. Oh, what 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 beats him? Well, the only thing is, like, he had a very deep prep last year, like in the spring. Is he a bit flat from that? But that you're just guessing. Like, you're yeah, guessing at that. That's one of those. That's a perfect example of you're looking for a reason yeah. for a horse to get beat when yep. you shouldn't be. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, because I look at the other years of. And like Streets of Avalon one or, you know, other horses like that. It's like they weren't going up against the likes of Mr. Brightside, who's the best miler in the country. Yeah. So it's like it's just it is it's really simple. <laughs> yeah. Um that race, I believe. But you know, maybe maybe we'll uh shop outside of Mr. Brightside if the if the drifters are looking for some value. Yeah. But we'll see. Well, if there's any available. V eight will probably start five bucks. Yeah, and that's the one where you're hoping for eight bucks. Oh, he's like I said, he's a pretty good horse, but he's not knocking off Mr. Brightside. I wouldn't have thought so. No. 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 But yeah, there'll be some more some more two year old racing, which I do love my two year old racing this time of year. It's fantastic. It's what creates the interest. Yep. Absolutely. And Jimmy Starr, what what price is he for a Doncaster, you say? Uh he was fifteens yesterday, I believe. That's a bit short. It is. It is a bit short. Um I was, I was chatting to Bradley yesterday and we were talking about another horse for the Donny that... Let's have um, a look. Let's have a look at that market. Would have been a great shout. Um, Doncaster Mile. So, fangirl $7. Surely not. Pericles? Yes, $17. I'd take, I'd take Pericles to $17 over Jimmy Star 15s. What about Oban Buramai at $13? He's not racing here, is he? <laughs> what? <laughs> I, I highly doubt it. Um... Yeah, Jimmy Star eleven dollars with Nets. That's that's tight. Way too short. That's tight. Um, Pericles seventeens. Yes, that's a good price for him. Unspoken at twenty ones. That's not a bad horse. Like he won the five diamonds eighteen hundred. Yep. Oh, he was pretty untapped. Millie's jewel. Millie. She's not going there. Nah. I'm looking down this list. It's getting a little bit. Osipenko at twenty six dollars. Cat. Democracy Manifest at 51s. He was pretty good in that um, King Charles. That's not a bad $51 shot. Lions Roar at 51s. I know who I'm taking now. That Redina at 51s. <laughs> Straight Acer in that market? $51. That's a good $51 bet. Yeah. Tis Invincible at 101, but she'll be going to the flight yeah. series, right? Yeah. Yeah. Princess Grace? Yeah. Skybird, $101. She'll probably be going to that series as well. No, yeah, per- <sighs> Pericles is the one there. Yeah, that's a... Roots at $51. Yeah. You know what? <laughs> Chris Waller, like, this is a perfect example of having him having too many horses. It's like... I think about Kovalika's prep um, in the spring. I'm like, he's a 2,000 metre horse for me. He should have gone to the Cox Plate. Yeah. Yes. And so you're like, okay, well, what, are, what are they going to do with him? Australia Cup, surely. Have to. Have to. Makes too much sense for me. It's a, that is a group two race at best these days. Yeah. I don't, I don't know what they do with him. Flemington, mate, Flemington for him? Oh, that would be perfect. I, f- I feel like he's been mismanaged. Um, well, the four-year-old, we see it every four-year-old season. Yeah, with Chris. Well, because he gets, he, I think he gets bullied sometimes. Yeah, I think he does. Uh, he was in all sorts for his Everest runner. Took Espiona. Mm. Like she's she's 
she's good. She's one of the best sprinting mares in Australia. But mate, I look at her. So she won a Coolmore at 1,500 metres. Yep. And now she's, I think they're targeting a new market with her at 1,200. Like, I, I want to see her at that 14, 15, even she a should mile. Be, she should be going to these group ones in Caulfield. Yeah. She'd be a great Stradbroke horse. Oh, yeah. She'd be weighted out of that now, though. Yeah. I think he's just got too many horses. Doesn't quite spend enough time knowing what to do with um, his superstars because he's so spread so thin, poor Chris. It's not his fault. No. Everyone wants to use him. He's the best trainer in the country. Yep. Spread too thin. Yep. He's got a superstar encounter, maybe racing in <laughs> Wyong. <laughs> Wyong. The Wyong wizard. I don't care. As long as, he, as long as he wins, I don't care where it is. Yeah. He's due. He is very due. All right. We'll see you Wednesday. See you.